for those that don't know Kevin Kaufman, um, he's a real estate agent, investor, entrepreneur. In 2008, he co-founded one of the nation's most successful teams. He's been on the Wall Street Journal top 250 teams like 10 plus times. Um, he owns uh, the Group 4610 Network with his partner, Fred Weaver. Um, he's the host of the Kevin and Fred Show. It's the podcast and the co-founder of the Real Estate Mastermind Next Level Agents, with, uh, which is a group on Facebook, um, as well as uh, they, they do seminars and masterminds. There's 20 plus thousand people. Uh, a part of that. Um, his, his podcast had millions or has had hundreds of thousands of downloads. He's made millions and closed thousands and thousands and thousands of real estate transactions. He's been on stage hundreds of times at uh, the biggest events in our industry, in the real estate industry. Uh, uh, but better than all that, uh, he's literally um, one of the realest guys I've, I've met in, in, in business. There's, there can be this um, facade people try to put out there and with Kevin, what you see is what you get. He's exactly this way. I've been over to his house for dinner. How he is on stage is how he is in front of his family is how he is with his people. And he's just one of the realest guys ever. And so I'm um, really excited to have him here today. So if we could please welcome Kevin Kaufman. Wow. By the way, I, I really need to have a not professionally. Well, I'm not sure that was professionally written. I need a less bio. Like that sounds so gross. So long. dude, you just hate you. Like you just hate people gawking over you. Yeah, dude. <laughs> you so bad. You, <laughs> he hates he, he hates when he, it's like he's made millions he goes oh i don't like that <laughs> so, it's funny well let's get started dude uh so for those that don't know you man if we can make it just kind of uh uh a, a quick introduction to um your your story and who you are and how you begun is, is your entrepreneurial story and how you begun um and just give us uh, some context so that when we have uh the questions that we're, we're going to hit you with today people have context yeah, so dude, I don't know how far back to go with this, but it's it's funny because I've now talked about this twice in the last like three weeks. Um, Fred and I just recorded kind of like a two part podcast on just sort of like the formation of our partnership. Um, something, some some somewhat unique is that we uh, I've got a business partner on my real estate team, um, and we're not related. We're not. We're definitely not married to each other we're just, we're like just friends that made it work and business partners that made it work over the long run. And that seems to be actually one of the more unique things that I've seen, at least in our industry. But um, I'll even go backwards. My buddy, Chris Bowers just interviewed me for his podcast uh, this week. And so he started asking me like, how did you get into real estate and some of those things. And so I would be remiss if I didn't first say, um, you know, I was in my late twenties and working for GE, uh, you know, at the time, one of the largest companies in the world still, I guess, technically is. Um, and all I knew was that, um, I needed to work for myself. Anybody who's been around me or could even just look at me right now, right now through the screen knows that I clearly do not dress like an adult and I'm not capable of living in the corporate environment. And so I knew at a certain point I had to learn how to be my own boss. And uh, so I started going back to school while I was working full-time for GE. And I met uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, Professor Goodner is his name. And he changed my life because he started talking to me, was the first person to ever really talk to me about money and real estate. And I just remember he came in one day during the semester and said, we're not talking about uh, whatever class he was teaching. It was some business class. He's like, we're going to talk about money and real estate today. And it just, I was like, I had that mind blown moment. You guys all know, and you've had that in your life. That was it for me. And so I, I tracked him down. I said, please, please, please let me take you to breakfast or coffee or lunch or whatever it is that you want. And uh, he said, yes, luckily. And he kind of became my first mentor. And I took every class that he taught for the next few months. And I won't go into great detail, though. I could talk about Professor Goodner for hours because of the impact he's had in my life. Uh, all that to say, that led me to realize um, real estate was going to be my thing. And so I, not knowing anything about anything, jumped into real estate in 07. My thought was I needed a job. And so I might as well just work in real estate. Like literally that was my thought process. I, I knew it was commission-based. I didn't know anything beyond that. I thought you just sold houses from time to time and like you made some money. And, and, you know, I basically, my thought process of what real estate was, was the same thing as most agents are. And I just got really fortunate because it was so dang hard. It was middle of 07. And I got fortunate in a way because my now business partner came to me with, uh, came to me and asked me if I would help him with some short sale listings. And then he had to tell me what the hell a short sale was. 
and I won't go into the whole partnership part of it. We could, uh, you know, I could direct you guys to like a two part podcast on that, but effectively that was, that was the beginning of me learning real estate. And I think Dustin, I just got super lucky right away. Cause I got around some smart people, uh, who were willing to share with me what worked for them and some people that were willing to mentor and guide me. And, um, we were able to start to put together a business and there's some faces on this, uh, zoom right now that are luckily like a, a big part of this business. And I can actually, I know Brian's here. I can't see him on my screen without scrolling, but I can see Jill and, uh, Jill Morris who works with us and has been, I want to say since, uh, 2000, June of 2016. Am I right, Jill? I think it was June of 2016. Um, you know, we've just been able to get in business with some really amazing people and real estate has just, I love real estate because it's, it helped me develop a passion for business that has come, that's gone way beyond just like selling real estate. So I don't even know if I answered your question, but there's a start. Yeah. I love it. You know, um, watching you over the years, like with real estate, and I've seen you transition your team a few times from short sales to more traditional, and I've seen you switch it, switch that up, or whether it was next level agents, or whether it was your masterminds, or even your podcast, like everything that you've done, um, you've 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 made it work, and you've well, made it work. Not that I stopped doing. <laughs> okay, I do so, like uh, I'm good at that. I am good at realizing, wow, this is a bad idea. I'm going to stop that. <laughs> so uh, what I was going to ask is like, what is your like? What's your superpower? What is it that the thing is that you're just, that you're the best at, that makes, that makes you who you are? People, just, just people, relationships. Um, and dude, you're, you are heavily responsible for helping me understand that. That's been just in the last couple of years. I think maybe I always knew it intuitively. Um, but if you said, hey, what's the one skill that you're like, you should teach the class on or that is truthfully at the center of everything you've done that's worked out well. It's been my ability to, um, to connect with other people. And I would say that's been more luck than skill. And I'm, um, and I feel so happy about that. And so I'm trying to now add some skill into, into my luck and sort of like natural ability. If we wanted to go beyond that, something more tactile, um, I would say the ability to see something that could come to fruition and kind of camp out until it works. Yeah. Like, to get through the suck part of it. Yeah. One other thing too, that I see that you are like, it's probably one of the things that I've learned from you the most is uh, I know for, for me and for a lot of people on the call too, is like some of the things that stop us is like caring what other people think. And you have this balance of being able to not care what people think and care about people yeah. a lot. How, give me some in-depth into that. Like, how do you, how have you, how are you able to just go after things, not care what people think and yet care about people so much like that I, dichotomy? Hmm, that's a good question. How, I'm not sure. I genuinely don't care if you don't like me with very few exceptions. Right. Um, and I think, I think probably I've always just been a little, okay, this is going to be maybe the most obvious statement for anybody that actually knows me probably always been a little bit of a rebel. Like I'm always going to go the other directions. Like I got my license in 07, literally had friends tell me, don't like you, you should have done that years ago. Don't do it. It's a bad idea. Or I just did, you know, we, we, we camped out in short sales when everybody said not to literally, um, or did my choice of footwear, you know, for years until I got old was flip-flops. And like, the thing is, so like, I've always gone against the grain. And I think that's the part of me that just doesn't give a rip what you think. Like, I'm going to do something because it makes me happy. Um, you know, like there's a, I'm going to go off on a tangent, but I promise to come back. Like, there's this really great book I just read called the psychology of money. Um, and if you guys, if you guys are interested in learning about money, uh, and long-term investing, I cannot recommend that book enough. The Psychology of Money by Morgan, Morgan Housel. In that, he gives this thing about how like most people, they buy an expensive car because they, they see themselves in the Maserati or the, the Tesla or the whatever, right? The Ford Raptor, because they think if I'm in that car, then people are going to see me and think that I'm cool. And, most, and the reality is most people see that car and they think about themselves and what they'll look like in that car, not what you look like. 
I'm neither one of those. I don't give a shit what anybody thinks. Like I literally drive it. Like I want, like I want what I want because I actually, I want it and you can not like it. That's totally cool with me. So there's this, there is this part of like, I just don't care what you think, but I do care about people's feelings. And if you're close to me, um, close to me, meaning could be like, um, business wise. And so then there's like, there's just a, there's a re deeper relationship or family or friends or whatever, then I'm definitely going to allow your opinion to carry or to carry a heavier um, value in my, like in my waiting system. But if I don't respect you, don't like you, don't know you fill in the blank. I like, I just, I'm, I'm going to take it for what it's worth and move on. And, and I will oftentimes try to challenge myself to go, is there something there? Like, should I be, should I be looking for something in this feedback? And I think having some coaches like John Cheplak, who's helped me with that over the years to go, Hey, is there anything that I, that actually would serve me here? Um, but for the most part, like, I, I just don't care. Like, like it's, it's okay. You know, if you, if you don't like me, I'm still, I'm still really comfortable if you don't like me. So um, I don't know how I do that, Dustin. I just know that I don't really care. I just care about people. Yeah. And I was going to ask, is that something that, is that natural for you or is that curated? That's supernatural for me. I think, mm -hmm. I think after I realized that it benefited me mm -hmm. or that it could benefit me, I think I learned to lean into it a little bit more, just like the relationship thing. I think after a while I'm like, oh, this is helping me. Duh, I should lean into it. That I think that helped. Um, but I very much uh, like to do things on my own terms. Uh, as much as I like to learn from people and pick up things here and there, like I'm also still going to do it the way I'm going to do it. I might do yeah. it the smartest, easiest way because I had a coach along the way, but it's going to be because I chose to. And if I want to do it a different way, that's harder. That's okay. I'm just, I'm just going to do it that way. Yeah. So. Um... Yeah. Cause I see that stopping people so much of just giving a shit what people think, you know, hundred percent. Um, like, dude, so many people care about, let that drive the decision. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, think about that. It's like a total cliche question. Like, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? Like, what would you do if nobody gave a shit? Like that should be the real question. Like, yeah. what would you do? Like, we're That's so, good. We are so focused. And I say we like all humans to a certain level, some of us 1% of the time, some of us, you know, 100% of the time focused on, oh, this person's going to think this or do that, or they're going to respond this way or that way if I say or do this. Mm -hmm. And um, the reality is, okay, some might, and nobody's thinking about you that much. Literally, mm -hmm. nobody is thinking about you as much as you think they're thinking about you. So you don't actually have to edit the photo that you posted and you don't, you don't have to worry about what suit you're wearing on stage or what color flip-flops or whatever. Like you could actually just show up how you really feel. And as I believe, my belief system, as long as you really are being yourself and you're working hard at whatever it is you're working hard at, like mm -hmm. that's what matters and that's what's going to come through. You know, and another thing that just popped in my head right now uh, from observing you is how accepting you are of others though, too on the turnaround you're you're very to, just accepting of who everybody is dude I, I have to be because i fuck up too yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you know what i mean so like yeah uh it uh sorry i'm gonna step on some toes um but you guys you know the ultra christian people that like are um they're they're mad at you because you sin differently than they do like <laughs> We all, dude, we all, like, we all screw up. We, we all screw up. And it, like, now don't get me wrong. I'm super judgy. Like I'm super judgmental. And if you're around me, you know that because I don't have a, I don't have much of a filter. So I, I tend to let it come out really, you know, out loud. Ask Fred, he'll tell you. Um, but the reality is, as though I'm, I'm never going to judge somebody because they screwed up. I'm always going to go, well, what did they do right after that? To me, that's way, that says so much more about a person because we're all going to screw up, dude. We're all, everybody screws up in a big way. And so, and I know that I have, and I know that I do. And so to me, I, the way I look at it is like, okay, but if they're, 
you know, now if you keep doing it, maybe you're just a jerk. Maybe you're just mean and like, I don't want to be around you. And I'm definitely going to judge you more and more the more I see you behave a certain way. But it's like, hey, you did something wrong one time, or you did this wrong, or you have this repeating behavior that's wrong. But like everywhere else is like, you're, you're a good person. I believe people are good and do bad things. I don't believe that there's that many bad people. Mm. Yeah, I see a lot of your judgments, though, buddy, they're very surface level. They're oh, not yeah. like, they're not like deep judgment, you know, it's like very, sur- like you'll judge somebody's shoes, like cool shoes. Or what They're very surface, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm like, I, I just, I feel like sometimes I see people screw up and I'm like, oh, I've made that screw up. Or I'm like, oh, I could see how they would make that screw up. I get it. That's hard. I'm not yeah. going to hold that against them unless they're just, unless it's like a pattern of bad, be- like a whole bunch of stuff. Like I just I definitely want to give people the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Um, another thing that I, I wanted to ask you today, because it's one thing I coach a lot of people and I, we, we, we hang around a lot of the same circles and, you know, successful, what looks success looks like where you see somebody who looks really successful and then you actually get to know them and they're pretty unhappy or they're unfulfilled or uh, they're, they're miserable. Um, and you, um, dude, you have been not only successful in your uh, business, but successful in your life. Like you're actually happy. Like you actually enjoy your life and you're actually a happy person. And so, um, what advice do you have someone like, how do you balance that? You know, how do you not let your business kill you? And yet how, how, like, how do you balance the, the happiness of, of, of you and also like the success of all these businesses you run? I think not, not letting your business kill you is a lot easier than we make it. Um, it's like, it's a decision to not work 24 seven realtors. I'm looking at you. That's a decision. Um, that's a decision you're making every day. Like everything we do is a decision, right? Um, I feel like in life, you know, as you, if you will, I'll call that everything outside of work. Um, it's probably also still a decision. And it's also probably the thing I've, I've worked the hardest on. Cause like I, I'm happy. I like to have fun. I enjoy things. And I'm also just dis- dissatisfied in a way that and I mean, that's true for business though, too. Like there's also, there's other places I want to get to. I don't know. I, I guess maybe, you know, Dustin, one of the things I guess I would share is my biggest fear in life is that I'm going to go, damn, I could have done more. And I know that I could have already done more. I'm aware of that, but I don't want to ever feel, I don't like that feeling. And I'm not going to sit I, like in 20 years from now, 40 years from now, 50 years, like, I'm not going to go. Yeah, I I definitely had more in me. I don't want that. That scares the shit out of me, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. That really scares me. And so I think part of it is that, and dude, it's a challenge. Like life is hard sometimes, like sometimes life is hard and we have to, we have to learn to deal with things. Um, I don't think it's as hard as we, as we make it sometimes. in fact, most times, and sometimes real stuff happens. And so we just have to learn to get past it and move on. And I think maybe the fact that I've just tried to learn from people like yourself or uh, Professor Goodner, who I mentioned earlier, or just other people in my life where I'm like, I want some of what they have. Like, how can I, how can I go get some of that? Like, what are they doing that I'm not, what are they aware of that I'm not? And I just Mm -hmm. try to implement these little pieces wherever I can. Yeah. You've mentioned this multiple times with people and connecting with people. And um, I know that, uh, a lot of us struggle getting around the right people. It's like, you know, that old, the old adage of like, you are who you hang out with, or, you know, you, you mentioned professor Goodman, or you mentioned, you know, your friend, Ronnie Doss, or you mentioned all these amazing people, but there's some, some of us are, are sitting here like, man, I want to be around those people. But like, how the, how do I do that? Like, how do I get around the right people? I will admit that this is, um, maybe more naturally easy for me. And the how, if I could give a how to on it, there would be, I think there's two key elements. Number one is be really damn good at what you do. I didn't say busy. I just said, be really good at what you do. Because when you're really good at what you do, that's the shortcut. Like that's the ultimate hack. How do I, I'll give you a quick example. Go back in time to 2008. I haven't even been licensed for maybe a year at this point. Fred and I had been teaching short sale classes because we were really good at short sales already and everybody else sucked. And I mean, 
And so, and so we got that led up, that allowed us to teach because we actually knew what we were doing. Nobody else did that allowed us to teach to people that were far significantly beyond us from a business accomplishment standpoint that got us in rooms right mm -hmm. now. So be, being really good at what you do, I think is the ultimate hack because that'll, because, Hey, if I have credibility over here, I become the best developer. I'm the best land developer in Arizona. I can go into Wyoming and talk to the number one cattle rancher if I want to, just because I'm the best developer. I'm, we're, we're doing different things, but this person is going to recognize that I'm really good at what I do. So that number one hack is just to be amazing. The number two hack is to pick up your head and pay attention. Like, don't care what people think, but like, notice what's going on. I can't, I'm going to, I'm, I hope that she's not on this call. I don't think that she is, but I have this friend and she loves two of my close friends. Um, the, and most people will know these two people and you all love them too. Their names are Ben Kenny and Tony McCarty and Ben and Tony. If you don't know them, I'm sorry. Your life will be better for knowing both of them. If you know, Tony and Ben, they're amazing. And I have this person, this, this, this acquaintance in my life who adores these two. Um, and she is, um, I've invited this person to so many good opportunities for that person to grow. Um, and I don't just mean classes. I mean, like just opportunities to, and, and they're like, how do you get to hang out with Ben and Tony? And I'm like, well, cause when I call Ben or Tony and ask them to have coffee or dinner or go to an event, they, they actually say yes literally every time they say yes. And so like, pick your head up from what you're doing. It's not that damn important what you're doing today or what you're doing on the 14th of next month. I don't even know if something's happening that day. Like, it's not really that damn important. Like if there's something going on that could, that you value that you could learn from, or there's a relationship you could create. I've just been willing to go and put myself in that situation to go, huh, what's here. Like you've asked me before, Dustin, about genius network, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't, I, I knew like two, I knew one person for sure going into the group. Turns out I knew two people already in the group, but like, I was willing to just go and like, go, oh, Hey, what is this? Who's here? Who could I talk to? Who could I learn? From? Oh, wait, there's another person over here. I know. Like I was willing to go put myself in a situation where there's people who are, I'm interested in what they're doing for whatever reason, could be business, could be health, could be personal, whatever. And most people not, this is not just like a real estate thing. It's just a, it's, you see it more prevalent with self-employed people are so busy being busy that they don't allow themselves to be present at things that are outside of their normal cycle of things. Like I'll ask agents like, Hey, are you going to go to, like, I'm going to go to this event that Y Lobo puts on it in, in like a week and a half. And I'm going to, you know, like, or I'll go to our company's national event in June and I'll ask other agents like, Hey, are you going to go to X? And they're like, no, why would I go there? There's just a bunch of other real estate agents. I'm like, yeah, I know some of them are really freaking smart. And if you just want to be cunning about it, they might send you referrals. So it'd be worth the trip to get out of your bubble for a second, but you might also learn something and connect with somebody. And so just being willing to do that, I think is so undervalued and not, not taken advantage of. Yeah. One thing I learned from you is I remember you said this once, some people schedule themselves so tight that they don't have any room for growth. Yeah. Like well, when an opportunity I, shows up. I learned that because I, I was doing that. Like I had, oh, I'm super ADD. Like I'm mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, shining light, boom, boom. So like, so then I did get good at scheduling. Like it's on my calendar and it's still, you know, to a point that's very true. If it's on my calendar, it's probably not going to happen or just it might like, I, I just might not do it for like a month and a half. But, um, but it's a, that's a, that's a, like a take on a Dan Sullivan quote, which is like, most entrepreneurs are just, are so scheduled or too tightly scheduled that they, that they can't transform. And when I heard that, by the way, I heard that at genius network, which I wrote a big check to go to. And then I had to go give up like 10 days of my, of my, of my work year to go to. And that was like a, hit me like a ton of bricks. And I was like, Oh God. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is put yourself in rooms with other people. And from what you said in the beginning, Stop caring so much what people think. And you may go up to them and actually like introduce yourself and make an impact yeah. and say hi. And, and on the back end, get hyper good at something. Yeah. 
and be curious of what these people are doing and what they're good at. Oh, and by the way, really develop the skill to learn from someone you don't like. Because ooh, ooh, most people just go, I don't like that guy. I don't like that girl. And so when she's talking or he's on stage, I'm in the other room or whatever. And like, that's so easy and requires no thought. Maybe figure out what you could, what's the one thing you could learn from that person, right? The other piece of it, so there's nuance here too, Dustin, like, so go back to the t too tightly scheduled thing. Um, that's the dark side of scheduling. The other, the other dark side of scheduling of uh, this nuance is like, most of us aren't scheduled enough. We'll just do whatever, whenever, because someone called. What? Someone called on my sign? Cool. I'm going to run out right now. I'm going to do that. Or, oh, I got to do that. Like, we don't even live by a schedule at all. So there is this middle somewhere where we have to live. I've found that most people tend to live on one of those two spectrums. And I found myself on both of those, which is why I work really hard to not be on either now, which is I'm not scheduled enough. So I don't have the focus time to be good at what I'm doing. And then I'm so scheduled. I don't allow myself the ability, the, the, the I never get bored. You know, I don't give myself the time to get bored. So that way I can start to, be creative and put myself in different environments because it's, you know, so I never look up and it's, mm -hmm. I think both ends of the spectrum are really bad. We got to be in the middle. I'm, maybe not bad. They're not as beneficial for us. Yeah. It's really like the, the dichotomy of both and finding that integration of them both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so on the topic of people, what is, what won't you tolerate? Meaning what, what is, what is just a hard no, no for you? Assholes. If you're mean to people, I, I got nothing. I got no time for you. If you're mean to other people, I have no time for you. If you are, um, uh, if you are racist at all, I have no time for you. If you are um, doing bad things to people, I have no time. Like, the, like those are some of the, like, those are hard things. But if you're just like somebody, if you, you just screw up. Okay. That's cool. Um, I get it. How are you going to behave afterwards? But like, if you're constantly screwing people over, trying to get one over on someone, always all about you, um, are just generally a bad person, discriminating against anybody for fill in the blank reason, um, or then like, or if you're, or you're too good, like I can't, I can't, I can't handle, I can't handle the big, I call it the big time. I hate personally being big timed. So like if, if you ever big time me, like we're done i just like that's cool like now i just know i'm like okay you're just you just go out a level that's all yeah well on the okay i can still learn from you but we're just not going to be close <laughs> i like that i was going to ask you to describe assholes but you just did perfectly so i appreciate that uh what for someone that what do you look for on, on so on the counter of that what do you look for with someone who's going to work very close to you what are what are the things you look for in someone who's going to I look for their names to be Joe Morris. <laughs> Truthfully, no. I mean, honestly, team players, people that have a sense of urgency, um, people that have a sense of so, like their solution base, like, hey, like, because pro problem, like work wise, dude, problems happen all day, every day, right? We all have problems. And we could sit around and talk about those problems or we can try to fix them. So you got to be able to want to fix them. And then you also like, I probably want to have to spend time around you. Mm -hmm. um, I love it. Who, who's impacted your life the most? Like who are the two or three people that's impacted your life and business the, the most uh, throughout your career? Dude, three people, seriously? Three, yes. In, really? Really? Uh, Two are easy. Like uh, this is super easy. I'm not saying this because Jill's here. Jill and Fred, for sure, in the business. Like there's not, there's, it's, it's not even close. Um, you know, I, I mean, I would just say my wife because she like let me quit my, like we were engaged and I quit my job and was like, I'm going to get a license. And it was 2007. She's like, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, and she's a teacher, by the way. So I, I mean, but dude, the, and um, the thing here is like, I could probably just give you lists and lists of people for like mm -hmm. different times in my career or different points and 
for different reasons, but, mm-hmm. um, the, the, like those, the, absolutely. Those, those would be my three. If you're holding a gun to my head, making me only name three. Speaking of your wife. Um, and I know this is something we've talked about on fired up Fridays before, but, um, how important is it to like, to have the family on board with what you're doing in your life and, and how important is it? And then how do you keep yours so aligned with what it is that you're doing? Okay. So there's a wildly, I don't know if they're different questions. They feel that way to me though. Okay. Important. I highly, I don't like, I don't know that you could assign a number or a factor to it. Right. Um, you know, I guess it just depends on like, I think you got to take a step back, dude. And first of all, and go, is my identity the business? Cause for some of us, uh, so many of us, it is. And so when we can let go of that first, then the importance of having um, the, the, like the whole family or even just like life outside of work can be become like a bigger deal, like it should be. Right. Because um, so I, I think part of it is just like identifying not as your work, like me not going, yeah, I'm a realtor or I'm a short sale person or I'm a real estate agent or whatever. So I think that's the first part is like, I actually have to uh, like detach from that. After that, it's just like, Dude, it could either, I feel like it could either be hard or, or it could either make it easier. It's like the cheat code for easy and it's the cheat code for super hard, right? So is the family on board or not? And if they're going to be on board and support you, then that's cheat code for getting, for, for getting where you want to go faster. And if they're going to work against you, fill in the blank for like, there's a lot of reasons why that could happen, right? Um, then that's going to be the thing that just is like, you know, it's like when you hang out with the wrong people, because like mm-hmm. you know, your family, like you even if you're the type of person that works too much, you still spend a lot of time with them more than anybody else, except for the people you work with. So there's going to be a lot of hanging on that can hold you back or it can, or it can slingshot you forward. So the level of importance is, I don't know that you could put a number on it. It's just, it's, yeah, it's important. It's, it's the most important thing outside of like your activities that you're going to do every day. Maybe they're, maybe they're even equal, like from a work standpoint, you're going to do activities that will determine where you're going and then equally as important, do you have support for that? Like, is something helping you or ho- holding you back? Cause it's, by the way, it's one of the, it's one or the other, it's either helping you or it's holding you back. It's not ever neutral. How do, for someone that maybe is struggling with that right now, like struggling with getting either their friends or their family on board with their mission, what it is that they want. How, how do I get my, how do I get, get them on my team? Your friends, your friends don't have to be on board, get new okay. friends. If your friends aren't on board, like get new friends. They're not your friends. They might love yeah. you and like you, but they're not your friends. They they can still be your friends. The way I learned it was like, there's the circle, mm-hmm. like it's all these circles, right? And the closest one, those are the people that I'm willing to spend the most time with. And then there's this other, then there's this next level out. It's like uh, layers of like a planet or something. Uh, you know what I mean? Like you could just see like people just get further out. So if they're not there to support you hundred uh, percent, yeah, just push them out further. You need new, you need new people to hang out with more. So good. that's it. And I mean that I, I absolutely mean that I, I have some friends that I absolutely adore. I love, and I'm not going to spend that much time with them because it's not going to support me or my family. Now in the family, I think that's a lot harder because, you know, I mean, hopefully anyways, you don't just push them out further. Um, I mean, I would say from, for some family members. Yeah. But like inside your house, as an example, um, assuming you have a spouse or a partner and or children, then um, I think you have to work on enrolling and also enrolling them into your vision and including them in your vision, as well as checking yourself to make sure that um, that the, what you're doing is a benefit to them. And it's not really all about you because, so that's a lot easier, but by the way, family members, absolutely. They can also be pushed out as easy as, as friends can, like they can easily go out a layer or two. And the way I look at it is kind of going back to that context of what I said earlier, like, I just don't want to go, I had more in me. That's more important to me than, than not pissing off somebody, even if they're in my family or if they're my friends, like if they don't like the way I don't hang out with them or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, just from, from watching you and observing you and being conscious of you, uh, you're also like very just open. Like I see that, like, like I, I know some people, they walk into their house and they kind of close off. 
you're just very open. You'll talk about whatever, whenever, however, like you really, you don't have a filter really around anybody, including your family is what I see. I think, um, I think there's like different topics that are relevant. Right. So yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, like my kid probably doesn't want to talk about, she doesn't like, my kids don't want to talk about podcasting pretty much at all, ever. Uh, <laughs> unless we're talking about the stories podcast and they're listening to that out, you know, so it's not, but like, yeah, if you're like, dude, do you remember that podcast? And we happen to be in front of them or what? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But, but I think that just goes back to like, just totally being okay with who you are and, and just, mm-hmm. you know, trying to be the best you can at that anyways. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think about it this way. We could probably all remember this time when Facebook was still newer and people were starting to realize there's a business opportunity on Facebook and all the realtors were saying like, do I have a second Facebook profile? That's like business only. And then like one that's like personal only, like that was a question that got talked about at like mega tech camp for like three years in a row. I'm like, you're a freaking idiot. If you think you need more than one page, just you are who you are. Stop trying to be who you're not. Like if you're like, maybe don't have the red solo cups on there. If you don't want your clients to see it. And maybe it's just that you don't want your clients to see it. Maybe it's that there's something there that you're not proud of yourself. Mm. So, so then like, take a look at that or, Hey, you're like me and you're willing to look like, you know, I said this to our regional director one time when he commented on my Volcom shirt that his son also had his 16 year old son. And I looked at him, I said, well, Tom, because your son and I shop at the same store. And just be okay with like, you know, like, you, like, yeah, this is who I am. Like, it, it's one of the two. Don't, don't, like, the more you have to try to hide that, I think that just makes life harder mm. for everyone, especially you. Yeah. Um, so I got some rapid fire. I got like, I got 18 minutes left. If you guys have any questions for Kevin, feel free to hit him in the chat. What's the last thing, what's the last time that you changed like a significant belief? in your, in your life. Like you believe this and then you're like, you know what? Nope. And you changed, you switched it. I found this happening so often. Um, cause I'm actively looking for those opportunities. Mm-hmm. A big thing I changed, uh, and I'm not going to give the very detailed detail specific, but it'll be specific enough is certain, certain words. Um, meaning I've started to realize that, that, certain words get used to describe certain groups or people or things or places that I just, I never thought they were bad or wrong or never even thought about why those words were chosen to describe a certain person, place, group, thing, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, when I've gone like, oh my God, why, why is that word used? Like I've really tried to, to look at that. Like I never thought of this issue one way or the other, like that being an issue, but like really looking at the way words are used in certain ways. Cause I realized the way we, the, the way we're programmed from say, I'll, I'll say from the media overall or groups of people is by you. First thing you do is you, you change word, you use words and pictures. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I've started to look at, all right, you know, I'm just gonna give you a real, real live example. I grew up in Yuma, Arizona. For those of you who don't know where Yuma, Arizona, it is on the border of California, Arizona, and Mexico. Okay. The term that was always used that was nice was illegal alien. I've come to hate the fucking word illegal alien. What, why, why do we use the word alien? Just little things like that. Like I've really just tried to challenge myself on different beliefs, whether it happens to be like personal or political or what do I really think about this, you know, this church, I'll call it a church topic or, or whatever. Um, I've just found value in, in going, do I really believe that? Or do I just think I believe that? Mm-hmm. Um, Chelsea Wright's got a question for you. Uh, our friend, Chelsea, uh, what mindset or concept are you working on integrating right now? Um, I, f- I find myself going back to listening to a book from a guy named Naval Ravikant and mostly because it's about he's like super rich and super peaceful and those are two things I would love to be I'm not ashamed to say how rich you know like that I would like to like I would like to to continue to make more and more money every single day Uh, for what reasons we could talk about that a different subject but like I find myself constantly going back to Naval 
um, because he's so at peace and has just different insights. But I think it, I, I really feel like it's been like a good two years now. I've spent time just trying to develop the mindset of questioning what I think I think. Mm-hmm. Um, another one from Crystal. What does success look like to you? So authentic success, like what is success to you? Well, I, I think first of all, to like me, as in like actually me, it's that is so it's personal, right? And so for me, it is. It's not losing, that's for sure. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't have this. I've had a weird relationship with goals for the last couple of years. And so when I hear the word success, I think of goals. Um, and I've had, a, I've struggled to set actual goals for different, I've had this just weird mental block. Um, and so I'm not as connected to what success looks like, though I feel successful in what I'm trying to do and simultaneously not at all where I want to be. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if that answers your question, but I'm having a hard time connecting to that right now. And I have been like, that's been a thing for a couple of years. Appreciate the honesty. Uh, what takes you Colby? Uh, what's your thought process that takes you from judgment to curiosity earlier? You had said, be curious of these people, even if something like, even if you don't like them or whatever, what takes you from that uh, uh, from judgment to curiosity? I mean, it's usually just like a, and interrupt, right? Like something interrupts me, like my, in my, my thought pattern, or, um, I just, I happen to reflect about it. You, um, I think it's just like, literally I have to slow down. Like, it's not, I'm not that good at, it's not like I'm great at like, Oh, dude, you got to stop being so judgy. Yeah. I gotta go listen. All right. This guy who I hate is on stage. What's he going to say? It's not like that. Like I'm not that good at I yeah. just like, it's something I'm thinking about. So I try to challenge. And so I do try to reflect back uh, and go, oh, this is somebody I could learn from. Mm-hmm. But it's hard, dude, it's hard in the moment. I, I know people can do it. I'm, I'm just saying, like, I don't think I have that part figured out at all. Um, what's the biggest obstacle from Danny Webb? What's the biggest obstacle you've overcome to become the best version of you? I mean, I'm always the biggest obstacle. Like, I don't know. <laughs> dude i could bet you're gonna say that like it's not like anyone was like you can't succeed and so they stood in my way i just i might have thought they were or things were but like you know it'd be easy for me to go well the market when i got a license in 07 like that was an obstacle or i could look at um you know i could talk about probably a ton of things health wise that was like a big obstacle to overcome that really helped or i could look at um the market's changing because like the, but there's been time and like Jill knows, cause Jill's been there when we've been punched in the nose, like the proverbial punch in the face that you and I talk about Dustin, like yeah, it, when there, I've been punched in the face business wise, plenty of times where it's like, Oh dude, like we really are off base here. Like we got us, we have to approach this differently. I mean, I could name times like that. I don't know if those were obstacles more than they were like, that just kind of happens in life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love that answer a lot. Um, cause it's, I'm the same when I, when I read the question, I was like me, <laughs> I'm the biggest obstacle. Um, 100%. uh, so what keeps you from Chris Webb? Uh, what keeps you driven? Like what, what, what is, what's the driving force for you to achieve at a higher level? Like, I like expensive shit, Chris. Like I <laughs> like this, the truth is like, I, I give away a lot of money. Like I like to help people. And I also really like, like, like I mentioned earlier, like I'm not, I didn't buy the Tesla. So you could be like, Oh, you see me in a Tesla. I bought the Tesla. Cause I was like, Oh my God, that looks amazing. Right. So I do like expensive. So at a certain level, I, I, jo- I've started to joke recently, but it's a joke. Cause it's also pretty true. I'm not sure if I'm lazy, but driven or driven and lazy. I'm not sure which one it is, but I'm both like, I, like I can really not work. But there's this part of me where I'm like, I also can't stop thinking about it. And I like, I like to figure things out. And again, I want to make more and more money. So I better. So it's like, it's this constant battle. I, I, I feel like, um, I, I think if, I guess the more stage where the answer would be going back to what I said earlier, which is, I just don't want to look up in 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 years and go, damn, I should, I could have done so much more. Mm-hmm. That, that really scares the shit out of me. Yeah. So I get really, I don't even like to think about it that much. Cause it just, it's, 
I don't like, I don't, cause it, I don't like the feeling that I get in, in that. Yeah. I, I love that you think that way. I was listening to a podcast the other day where a guy goes, he was talking about how, how, how much we deny death. We live, live as if we're never going to die. And um, you have this in your forefront that you are going to die. And so let's get busy living. Let's do it. Let's keep going. Yeah, That's kind of what I, I took mean, from you, that. Have, you don't have to. It's definitely a choice. Yeah. But you probably yeah. should. I feel like I should. Uh, that's good. You don't have to, but you probably should. <laughs> uh, that's good. Someone write that down for me. Um, Liz Young, what is the greatest tool in your business that you wish you would have implemented sooner? The greatest tool? Or what's something in your business you wish you would have implemented sooner? I mean, I wish I would have met Jill in 2007. Um <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm gonna say this like and i mean it, it you know me dustin i wish i would have I, I yeah i wish i would have just moved brokerages like i would i wish i would have just moved brokerages earlier mm -hmm. like i know that's not necessarily a tool or even jill is saying yes like that tells me for sure that's right but <laughs> like I, I i can tell you right now i wish that i wouldn't have been so damn hard-headed about my line of thinking and the way i saw the real estate world that I just wish I would have been more open-minded sooner to just literally change brokerages. Like had I done that sooner, that would have made such a huge impact for me. You know, it's funny. Our friend Ronnie, he said this to me one time, like straight to my face. He goes, Dustin, it's the things that you're so certain of that you're oftentimes the most wrong about. Yep. And that shook my whole life. Cause I get very yeah. dogmatic and I think we, at some point I, I can get very dogmatic about things. And, uh, yeah, that really, I was like, fuck you, Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I can see that. uh, got some really good questions here. So, uh, Chelsea, Wright Again, uh, how do you center yourself when you are feeling impatient with the distance between where you are now and where you want to be? Great question. I have this, Fred and I have the saying, we've been saying it for years, which is, uh, and you could probably add to it with, if it's going to be good, then you could say what we've been saying. It costs more money and takes more time than we thought. And it's just a constant reminder. And I'm like hyper impatient, like in the moment I am impatient. I've learned to be more patient with result, like long-term results. Um, but I think to even st step that back a little bit further, if you, if you genuinely believe in the long game, it's not that hard. It actually like, it's, it's, it's really, it's makes it a lot easier to go. Well, the result I'm after isn't necessarily next month or next week or next year. Oh, then, okay. Then I can, then I can do that. Yeah. Really good book on what kind of what he talked about the infinite game by Simon Sinek. Really good. Oh Yeah. Um, Joshua Smith, as you've grown, do you feel you have to set more and more boundaries in your life? More or less. Yeah. 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 yeah no, no doubt about that. Like boundaries for sure. Um, both to, again, like go back to what I said earlier, which is like, you know, the, the, the people that I allow myself to be around or to, to be around me, that was something I, those were boundaries that I started setting, you know, early on. Um, uh, but then boundaries even for myself as to like what I'm what I'm allowed to do because we all only have like so much time and so much ability to get things done that we have to make sure what we're doing is the thing that gets us closer to what, what we want soonest if that makes sense it does yep uh our friend Adam Pakes has a question uh, how do you manage technology in the household with respect to your kids and their usage? And are there boundaries you implement? Best hack ever. My wife just hates screens. So like, I almost don't have to. And, and I do. Um, so first of all, I think it just kind of started off early. Like we just, we just don't watch much TV in our house it, period. Like I watch sports on the TV and then like movies with the kids. Like that's almost the only time our TV gets turned on. Um, sometimes it goes week without even the tv being turned on that said the kids do have tablets um like the little kid kindle fire thingy majiggers 
um, that gets managed by like literally setting like adult supervision settings and times. I think as they get older now, I'm lucky because my kids are only seven and nine. So we're not at that point yet. But as they start to get older, where they're using more of like the open internet that I don't like, like I'm just going to have to find better ways. Like I'm fairly tech, technologically savvy, or at least I'm aware of things and I'm totally okay. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just kind of policing that. But I think the bigger hack to that is like just having real conversations with my kids. Mm -hmm. I love that. Like Did you hear that? We try like something, something I, I learned this from my wife was like, cause she would always say like the anatomically correct word mm -hmm. for certain body parts, even when our kids, like when they were babies and I was like, and she's, she told me that part of the reason why you do that is so they understand that and you give them language in case there's ever a situation and it's not a bad word to say or like, and so I, that, and uh, I remember very specifically, I listened to a podcast by the name of, by a guy by the name of Rob Bell, who um, had a, had a, a podcast episode called has, Oh, you've never been in a car wreck before. And it was, he got into a little fender bender and his daughter was in the car with him. And he talked about the importance of, not letting situations go without being talked about. So that way the, the child doesn't just use their imagination as to what just happened, whether it's something big or, or not, or, you know, and so that one podcast episode has stuck with me for years that I just try to do whenever there's something awkward that happens, or I like, I literally go to talk, talk, to, talk to them about, don't let them make up their own, their own story about what just happened. Uh, and so I try so to do a good, good job of that. So good. And it's funny because uh, my friend here, Rico, uh, when you said have real conversations with them, that's powerful. And yeah. I, I know my, my buddy, he's, he's very much that. Um, all right. So, uh, some more, we got about five minutes now. Um, let's see here. We got any more questions. What's the one book, you know, the one book question, one book. The number one book for you. I'm not giving you one. Um, the one most recently business wise would be called the road less stupid by, by Keith Cunningham, the road less stupid by Keith Cunningham, without a doubt. Um, I'll just, that's just overall business. There's another book I mentioned earlier called the, it's called the almanac of Naval Ravikant. And that's just kind of like more of a view of life and business that, and the one book that changed everything for me early though, that really opened my eyes two books, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, uh, and then The 4-Hour Workweek because it just was like the principles in that to think differently. Um, and then recently there's this little book I call, I love called Exactly What to Say, which is just because I'm really interested in, you know, like neuroscience, kind of nerdy like that. And then uh, along the same lines, there's a book called Thinking and Bets, Thinking and Bets by Annie Duke. So good. Well, in the, so Stephanie's asked, what was the second one you mentioned? Yeah, I don't know. I just mentioned like eight, eight of them. Uh, yeah. Um, the, what, the road less stupid is what I said first. Oh, the almanac. Of that, the almanac. That's what Naval. That's it. So Thank Naval, you, Chelsea. N -A -V and you could probably find him at na.al, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, on, yeah. on, but it's awesome. Uh, knowing what you know now at your age and going through what you've gone through, what advice do you have for your 18 year old self? If you could go back and you could just have one piece of advice for your 18 year old self, what would it be? Yeah, well, I mean, I'd probably like, you know, Bitcoin would be the one word I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> if I could, I'd be like, you just trust me when you do this. I don't know how to do it and do it. Just trust me, it's gonna work. Uh, <laughs> And then secondly, it would be, it'd be three letters EXP. But I think the bigger story there is um, being will, I've always been curious and being willing to follow my curiosity and not like stuff down. Or like I noticed, like a skill I have is I notice stuff before most people do. Like I notice trends and I notice things. Like there was a show called The Good Wife. I don't know if you guys remember that show. And there was an episode effectively about Bitcoin. And I remember thinking like, oh yeah, I've heard of this in real life. And then I remember thinking, that sounds like a really good idea. And then I do shit for like seven years. And then, you know what I mean? So it's just like literally, 
trusting yourself when you, so for me, that'd be like, when you know, when you pick up on something, like maybe dig a little, maybe just dig a little bit deeper into why you're thinking that or, or sensing that. And is there something there? Love it. Um, okay. Last two questions. Uh, what do people uh, misunderstand about you the most? I, I don't know if we have that much time. What's little, one? Like the one What do miss- people get wrong? Yeah. What do people get wrong about you? Oh, dude, people get so much wrong about me because, because of the way I dress, um, which is like a child. Um, so um, I think people definitely think I just, I'm super stringent in my beliefs and I'm not. I am like, I have strong convictions that are loosely held is the term I've used for it. Uh, like, you can, and I knew this early on at a bet. One of my very best friends told me, well, cause I asked for some feedback. Uh, I was doing this exercise that a speaker recommended, which is asking people close to you, like the three things that you, they think you do the most. And he said something to me, and this was literally like, Oh, seven. He said, you were so convinced of your argument for whatever topic until somebody proves, shows you that there's that they're, that you're wrong or there's a better argument. And then you're a hundred percent in that direction. He's like, I don't, I don't know how you do that, but you do that. And I didn't realize that early on, even though he identified that me, you know, 15 years ago. Mm. Changing your so, mind's a superpower. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. And I've always done it just not enough. Like, and now it's just been like, it's been painfully obvious to me over the last four years where that's hurt, not doing that hurt me. And so I think now I've leaned into figuring out how to do that more. Mm. Um, actually, I added one more question and then I have my final question just because we have a lot of real estate agents on here. Um, what do you see? Uh, what do you see with regards to real estate agents that want to grow like, and they want to take their business to the next level? What do you see in those that stay stuck in those that are, that actually can, can take it to that next level? The ones that stay stuck are just committed to their own story. Like they're committed to, well, I'm doing everything I can do anyways. And they're definitely doing some things. They're just not doing the right things clearly based on results. I don't, I don't know if, um, um, yeah, I would, I would, I would say that like, that's, that's what I would say is like, the reality is, is you can be doing something different. You're just, you're just too stoned to, to do something different. Cause maybe you're right. You know, you're, you're committed to be right. would be like the fancy way of saying that. Like mm-hmm. you're, you're committed to be right because it's gotten you to X, Y, Z. Maybe you do a certain amount already and that's awesome. Um, mm-hmm. it's not at all what you want. And so I think people stay stuck in that. All right. Last question. Uh, and I think you're going to know where this question came from. You've got one message that the whole world gets to hear before you die. The whole world hears it. What's that message? Oh, dude, just one. I'd like, I need categories and lists, bro. This is like asking me my favorite, whatever. Uh, I asked, Uh, just so you guys know, I asked Kevin before this, if if he wanted me to send him any questions. So he was prepared for today. And he said, Nope, I want to freestyle it. I, by the way, and I always do, I would not have read the questions if you sent them to me. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. One of the fun parts about me, you look, you find out what I'm going to say at the exact same time I find out. Um, (laughs) I love the authenticity. Like that's, that's really like, that's really who I am. Man, one message. This is like the Tim Ferriss billboard question. Yep. Uh, Dude, I, oh my gosh. There's a, you know what, I'm going to do this might be an easy way. This might be a cop out. Cause I feel like this is a very nuanced question answer for me. There's this rapper by the name of NF and he says, there's this line in his, one of his songs that says, don't believe what you believe just because that's how they raised you. And so I'm just going to use NF's lyric. Oh, I love that. Solid. <laughs> that's yeah. fire. Hey, can we give it up for Kevin Kaufman? Kevin Thanks, Kaufman, brother. baby, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Great to see hey, you, that was uh, that was amazing, Kevin. I appreciate you a lot, brother, and thank you for taking the time out to. Uh, you're you're just a fucking 
you're the real deal, dude. And I'm just so grateful that you're my friend. I'm so lucky that I get to have you in my life. Um, I admire you. I respect you. I look up to you. There isn't anyone that I, that I introduced to you that doesn't tell me, dude, you're hundred percent, right? He was the shit. Like my wife loves you to death. Like she loves I you. Love me. She, I love she, me. she asked for, I go, dude, just ask for his time. He'll say yes. And she did. And they're like, yeah, come up. So, um, I appreciate you in the, in the comments, two things I'm going to ask you guys in the comments. What was the takeaway that you got from Kevin today? Um, what was, what was one of the bigger takeaways that you got from today? One, and then two guys, uh, if you don't mind taking a picture of this right now, please, there's 90 of you on here, take a picture of this now. Um, and then share it on social media with, with, with something that you guys uh, took away from, uh, Kevin and I's conversation today. Um, you're the man, dude. I fucking love you a lot. I love you. And there's a lot of familiar faces on here that I love deeply. Uh, and I say that not, not lightly at all. Yeah. Um, I only have one problem with you, bro. That, and that's that there's only one of you. <laughs> so uh, good yeah, shit fine. guys. <laughs> thank you again, Kevin. I appreciate you brother and uh, everybody on the call. Thank you. Next week, same time, firedupfridays.com. Invite your friends, invite your family. We got up to like 128 people in here today. That's fucking awesome. I appreciate you guys. I love this community. I love what you guys are about. And uh, thank you for your con always contributing, Kevin. Absolutely. I'll see you soon, brother. Bye, buddy. Love you. See ya.